Good morning, folks. Today we're going to be hitting the latest from Gaia on the Milky Way galaxy. We'll look at the first prediction of the next two solar cycles, and we're seeing a confirmation that the most veteran observers will cheer. But we're starting, as always, with the last 24 hours on our star. Exactly what we said might happen has happened. The growing sunspot situation has rendered our star once more able to produce solar flares. I expect that to continue here today as well. And let's take a closer look here with the GOES X-ray flux, and you can see how the solar flares woke back up peaking at the M7 blast yesterday. The largest flare maker was the northern departing sunspot, top right quadrant, but focus today and into next week will be the bigger sunspot group on the south. It is the only larger group on the southern hemisphere at the moment, but it has not yet fired bigger flares due to its magnetic characteristics. It's a perfect split side to side, like a middle school dance, and until they start getting jiggy with each other in the middle, the flares will wait. We're also eyeing a couple plasma filaments that are turning in with the new flurry of sunspots. After the sunspots in the peak watch position, we're eyeing these filaments as well. Let's go to Gaia where the latest data input leaves us with billions of stars scoped and characterized. They can now map the galaxy much more accurately, including its warped disk. They have analyzed and traced the history of the large and small Magellanic clouds and various other small satellite groups. It's the most productive astronomy mission of the century so far. Up next, the first high-level prediction of solar cycles 26 and 27 due to peak in the 2030s and 2040s. This study forecasts huge cycles, much larger than the current cycle, which is larger than the previous cycle in the 2010s, and that would mean that this grand minimum was a dud, and that with Earth's weakening magnetic field, our clock is ticking. Speaking of the magnetic pole shift, I hope there is at least even just one observer out there who remembers this from my books, or my old disaster videos, the paper that debunked the pole shift, which said the poles stayed at the polar region. It has a correction, that's the orange type you see there, and the correction takes the pole positions from their original work, which debunked the idea of a pole shift, and in some cases, changed those polar positions to the exact opposite side of the globe. Other instances were adjusted by 60, 45, 25 degrees. The paper that said the poles don't move actually proved they do, but virtually nobody saw that correction story. Today, a similar study did what the previous one did, but combined the original and the correction paper into one. I could describe in detail the findings, but images sometimes tell the story a bit better. Expected pole locations, alternative pole locations, nope, the actually measured location where it was actually found, Nowhere near the first two. Folks, I've said this before, but I'll say it again. The crust does shift in this disaster cycle, and it's about to happen again, changing the pole positions once more. Folks, if you are braving the snow today and coming out to the prepping event at Observer Ranch, your extra reward is a chance to win a prepping session with me. We will, of course, have tons of other events happening this year. Pole shift mini conferences, meetup days, grand opening with Dr. Robitaille, and King of Catastrophism with Dr. Dunning on May 3rd and 4th. Seriously, guys, come out and see us. It all starts at ObserverRanch.com. We greatly appreciate your support. We'll do this all again tomorrow. Right here, but right now, it's 5.30 a.m. in the new Valley of the Sun. Eyes open. No fear. Be safe, everyone.